Good morning. The Atkinson Foundation's first foray into public policy process was to advocate for its own existence. In 1949, the Ontario legislature passed the Charitable Gifts Act to prohibit a charity from owning more than 10% of a business, a restriction that did not exist in other provinces or at the federal level. The effect of this legislation was to retroactively prevent the foundation from owning the Toronto Star after Joseph Atkinson's death. Make no mistake, the Charitable Gifts Act was a political move to curb the power of a charity that dared to promote social and economic justice. It aimed to force the sale of a progressive newspaper to private interests who would change its editorial policy and run it strictly for profit. The government of the day did not succeed, but it took more than a decade of defiant and effective advocacy to overcome this legislative obstacle and to establish the foundation. It took another 50 years for the act to be repealed and the rights of charities operating in Ontario to be restored. This story helps explain Atkinson's passion for equity and its preoccupation with democracy. There are many other stories. This recent report from Grantmakers for Effective Organization reminds us that most foundations are rooted in corporate banking or academic cultures, but a few of us inherited something quite different. In our case, the, the culture of a family who knew poverty intimately before they knew wealth, a firebrand newspaper, and these six principles. This means Atkinson is active on several policy files these days the City of Toronto's first poverty reduction strategy, Ontario's Changing Workplaces Review that will modernize employment standards and labour relations, and the Infrastructure for Jobs and Prosperity Act, new legislation that links the province's multi-billion dollar infrastructure investments with community benefits like jobs, apprenticeships, and other economic opportunities for low-income communities. It's impossible for me to unbundle these files or break down our work into discrete philanthropic interventions. Social justice philanthropy is never about one issue, strategy, tactic, or level of government, nor is it ever about a single advocate. We've been collaborating with several for close to 20 years and others for just a year or two. The base of workers, employers, community activists, researchers, journalists, philanthropic heads, civil servants, and elected officials grow stronger year by year. Our individual voices and efforts are distinctive, but it's our combined voice and effort that has proved most powerful. For our part, we set up the Atkinson Decent Work Fund to support research and community organizing in neighborhoods like Weston Mount Dennis, Scarborough, and Peterborough. We made it into the muddy public policy collaborative work of building a pathway for job seekers into the construction sector. We partnered with think tanks to uncover and document what's working in other jurisdictions. And we invested in the Toronto Star's capacity to report on these kinds of policy issues. We faced many barriers, challenges, and failures in forming relationships with the people whose private troubles are at the core of public issues. It hasn't been easy either to grow their community of allies. We've learned to see difficulties as inevitabilities, not deal breakers. So before we jump into an issue, we ask ourselves, is it worth doing despite the obstacles? That's what we did when we entered the fight for universal early learning child and child care 18 years ago. And that's what we did when we set our sights on building stronger movements for decent work and shared prosperity just two years ago. Since then, we've been rediscovering the complex relationship between projects, policy, and power in our particular context with the help of Dr. Manuel Pasteur and others. Projects help us see what's possible. He says, policy makes the possible standard practice, and power, democratic power, ultimately drives policy reform. When it comes to public policy, we're learning to play a series of finite games within the infinite game of social and economic justice. It's not a game like chess in which some pieces are more powerful than others. 
It's more like a jigsaw puzzle in which pieces fit together so seamlessly you can't tell where one begins and the other ends. In chess, there are only two colors and the object is to take over your opponent's territory. The pictures emerge from many colors pieces in a jigsaw puzzle. A single piece can be multi-hued. <coughs> excuse me. Each piece is important, something we discover when we're close to finishing the puzzle and we discover that a few are missing. It's like that with philanthropic projects and policy interventions sometimes. The power generated by many people working together for the common good is too often the missing piece. Who is included or excluded from the policy development process? When is it okay to speak for someone else? How does money help or hinder on a public policy issue? I look forward to hearing your answers and to continuing this conversation together.